I need some more smoke. There is never too much smoke. More smoke. I love smoke. <coughs> there is too much smoke. I hate smoke. I want your boots and your motorcycle. I remember like it was yesterday ordering my first laser pointer in 1993. Uh, I mail ordered this thing from a company who sold slide projectors. You know the things where you put slides in and then on each holiday you have to watch uh, your family uh, vacation photos over and over again. It was a one milliwatt red laser pointer. And I was quite proud about it because it was quite new technology, quite expensive though in the time. And uh, of course I started playing around with laser beams and mirrors uh, and a little bit of smoke. Of course at the time nobody would ever knew that um, one day people will have a industrial grade laser cutter, a 40 watt laser cutter at home. Uh, same like uh, in Back to the Future where Doc Brown discovers this portable TV studio. That was quite fascinating. Um, but nowadays, bless you, a lot of us um, do have K40 laser cutters or laser cutters at our homes and um, we can um, do stuff with it. So um, I thought why not try to engrave mirrors and I got me some very cheap mirrors, um, mirror tiles from the local home improvement store piece of glass, a vaporized metal coating, probably not silver because they're way too cheap, probably some sort of uh, chrome, chromium tin alloy kind of thing. And then we have a protection coating on the back in order to not scratch it. Um, yeah, so I already go ahead, got ahead and, and try to engrave something using the K40 laser. Uh, I started off with um, four milliamps and ramped it up to 15 milliamps, which is the highest output setting um, my laser supports. Um, with mixed results, well, all of them managed to burn away this protective layer, which is cool, but it also penetrated uh, through the metal and it um, leaves some very um, ugly lines here from the engraving mode um, that are visible from both sides, which is a bit annoying. So today I'll try um, to find a better way uh, in order to, um, yeah, engrave mirrors in a way, because the idea is, as you can see here, um, to engrave um, the Super Mario cube um, on multiple tiles and then I will build me a cube um, that gets light up with some LEDs, some orange LEDs maybe with a little animation thing uh, around it, uh, I will see. The other thing I want to try out is if I can, um, f especially for this one, this piece, um, if I can remove the metal coating here using some ferric chloride or iron chloride that I used in my last video about the PCBs, um, in order to make something uh, like a hybrid out of a window and a mirror kind of thing. Yeah, let's get started. Let's get right over to the laser. I start with a conclusion, what I found out so far. There are plenty of manufacturers that provide mirrors on this planet and every one of them has its own recipe, not only for the reflective coating, but also for the protection layer on the back. What results in using different approaches in order to engrave them? The mirror tiles I have are not willing to be engraved that easily, so I try different methods here and try out what works best for the ones I have. So even I wanted to, I cannot tell you what technique works best for your brand of mirror, but I can give you some hints of what techniques you can try. Starting with a lineup of what settings I can influence on the laser in order to get better results. I can of course adjust the output power of the laser, what is regulated by the amperage. My laser, in case of the K40, ranges from 1 to 15 milliamps. Then I can change the feed rate in software. In engraving mode, my software standard is 200 millimeters per second. I can also reduce the output of the air assist, what for wood makes a huge difference, but in case of mirrors I don't think it matters too much. But there is another point that often gets missed out on, the focal point of the laser. Ideally your honeycomb table and working material are brought to the perfect height uh, to hit the laser beam at its ideal focal point. So there are four main adjustment points we can play with. Also think about what side of the mirror do you want to engrave. You can mark uh, the glass from the front or burn away the coating on the back side. What looks awesome when lit up with some LEDs. Do you want to remove entire parts of the mirror coating or just engrave some outlines? In case for the outlines, you can simply use the laser in cutting mode at 15 milliamps and uh, get quite nice results. But keep in mind that engravings on glass can look a little bit rough as uh, the laser heats up the glass so quickly that little fragments shatter and get blown away. So what looks like an engraving from far is basically a path of destruction of finely shattered glass. 
But today I want to go the more complicated route of removing bigger parts of the actual backside coating, making a backlit mirror. So I made some test engravings. I started at 1 milliamp going up all the way to 15 milliamps. 1 milliwatt watt by the way is the point on the potentiometer what the laser barely emits any laser light at all is too weak to burn away anything. 2 milliamps burns off some of the coating but um, is not powerful enough to reproduce fine details like um, these stripes here on the Back to the Future logo. 3 to 5 milliamps burns the back coating and also starts penetrating through the metalized mirror coating uh, at some point at least um, what leaves us with a unfinished dirty kind of look. 5 to 10 milliamps gives a clear engraving but melts the back coating into the glass what in my case leaves a yellowish brown residue on the glass. I uh, could live with that if it would remain as an even coat, but it didn't. You can see some spots here where it flaked off entirely while the rest is burnt in so hard that I am not able to remove it. 10 to 15 milliamps uh, induct so much heat that the coating burns enough so I can scrape it off using an X-Acto knife. However, other than most materials, both of these mirror coatings do not shrink or warm or induct enough heat um, inside the surrounding area um, to make a proper line-free engraving. The laser light only burns off the coating where it is hottest. What leaves me with a not so satisfying result? You see the raster lines of the laser. So what I can do is to purposely defocus the beam a little by putting another mirror underneath in order to bring the working piece up towards the laser head. So I go ahead with this idea bringing the mirror up more and more what makes the beam wider and wider but of course less effective. So in order to compensate the loss of power I adjust the feed rate from 200 mm to 100 mm per second and um, do a single pass at 15 milliamps. Now you see this brownish residue starts to peel off. The engraving line seems to be gone as well. So after scraping off the remaining residue, it leaves me with this, what is not perfect but lies in my personal tolerance spectrum. As I still have ferric chloride from my last video, I thought I could give it a careful try on one of my test mirrors if I be able to etch away some of this residue. Well, that did not work, and uh, thanks to my Patreon techie Steve, I know why. Pretending that the mirror coating is really made of silver, ferric chloride would convert silver to silver chloride, what is unsoluble. I would need nitric acid to etch it off, what exceeds my knowledge and um, the topic of this video, uh, but uh, was a quick little side experiment. So in conclusion for this particular mirror type, uh, my way of engraving it is uh, 100 mm per second at 15 milliamps power, an unfocused beam of 4 mirror heights, scraping off the residue with an exacto. For the rest of my build I use some hot glue to glue the mirror tiles together, an Arduino and some strips of LED tape. And now I can finally become a famous Twitch streamer. My just pooped under my desk. La 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 la. With uh, something like this stuck on the shelf uh, of my streaming room. So this was it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Check out my new Discord server. I had a quite a bit of fun there. So um, yeah, just go ahead, check it out. For the rest, um, you can always leave me a comment here. Please subscribe, ring this little bell, and I see you on the next one. Until then, see ya.